This is Alice, disturbed and repeatedly circling her cage, her head rolling. This is known as stereotypic behavior, and it indicates that Alice has been psychologically damaged by her deprived environment. Look closely at her cage. No dimension measures more than a few feet. No bedding, no foraging materials, virtually no furniture, and a harsh metal grid floor. Her sides are pink and bare, where she was reportedly attacked by cage mates at another establishment. But she still hadn't recovered when this film was shot some seven months later. It is often said that British laboratories have to adhere to strict guidelines. Yet here, almost every government guideline for the keeping of laboratory primates is ignored. Alice is at the Institute of Neurology in London. These scenes, secretly filmed by the National Anti-Vivisection Society Special Investigations Department, show day-to-day -day life for Alice and other monkeys. This is the world that animal experimenters don't want you to see. In this video, you will see why. This is Elisa, a macaque monkey with a steel headpiece, tubes and electrodes permanently bolted into her head. This is part of a lengthy experiment involving many monkeys to trace the connections between the brain and the hand. Yet this kind of research has been strongly criticized by scientists in this country and abroad. Experimenter Roger Lemon kept Elisa with extensive metal chambers in her head for several months, up to 12. During experiments, she was restrained by the headpiece being bolted to three rigid bars attached to the cage sides. The wires in her brain were connected to a computer, and she performed hand tasks she had been taught for up to four hours at a time. To make her willing to do this, she would be starved for 24 hours before the experiment and given food rewards during the tests. This experiment is legally classed as only causing moderate pain. Lemon notes, pigtailed macaque monkeys are used because of their generally intelligent character, enabling them to deal with complex tasks. They're generally docile and friendly nature their capacity to deal with the procedures over long periods of time, up to 12 months, and their large hands, which make the recording of EMGs from individual muscles much easier. In order to get permission to do these experiments on Elisa, Lemon had to apply to the Home Office for a project license. His application for a five-year license states that he will use 61 monkeys, 25 rats, and four cats. The Home Office awarded this license in just three working days. Alice, whom we saw earlier, was not destined for research, but was a companion for Elisa and other experimental monkeys. In fact, she was a different species and was kept in a separate cage from the animals she was supposedly keeping company. In his project license application, Lemon states, We have developed effective methods for the housing, cleaning, pre-medication and post-operative care of macaque monkeys. We have spent time developing toys and other objects to keep the monkeys from becoming too bored. And none of our monkeys displays the stereotypic behavior of bored captive monkeys. In his statement supporting the application, Robert Walker, Secretary of the Institute of Neurology states, if this project is licensed by the Secretary of State, I accept responsibility for ensuring that suitable facilities for its performance will be available in accordance with the code of practice for the housing and care of animals used in scientific procedures and my responsibilities as set out in paragraph 2.6 of the guidance. It is these codes of practice that are repeatedly used 
to placate a public concerned about animal experiments. Laboratories frequently boast that they must adhere to strict guidelines. Yet long-term undercover investigations inside six British laboratories by the National Anti-Vivisection Society have shown that any codes of practice and guidelines are routinely ignored. For laboratory primates, there are more guidelines than for any other species. They are supposed to be group housed because they are social animals, but instead they are kept singly. They are supposed to have bedding and foraging materials, and instead they get a wire grid floor. When the NAVS exposed the dismal conditions in which tamarind monkeys were being kept at St. Mary's, the Home Office responded, the inspectorate will ensure that the new arrangements which St. Mary's are planning will allow for paired and group housing and will provide a more stimulating environment than possible hitherto. Clearly, this decision only affected the laboratory that had been caught out and not the Institute of Neurology just a few miles down the road. You can make a difference for Alice and Elisa and the countless rats, mice, dogs, cats and other animals suffering in secret in Britain's animal laboratories. It's time to end the secrecy and to stop cruel and useless research before it takes place. The law has failed to protect laboratory animals like Alice and Elisa and the government's code of practice for the housing and care of animals used in scientific procedures has been proved to be not worth the paper it is printed on. Just remember, the laboratory you are looking at was licensed and inspected by the Home Office and no one would ever have known about it but for the NAVS investigation. Please join the National Anti-Vivisection Society campaign today and help us unlock the labs. Thank you.